back at the heart of the action and now he's got a chance to beat one of the best players in the world, the two-time World Masters champion, this year's World Championship semi-finalist, and put a massive point right. on the board. But as we say, he You're might not right. get the chance to do anything about it. So much hinges on David Alcady's break. Here we go, the last rack of the night, and surely the biggest of this Moscone Cup so far. Well, he's got a shot at the one, Kelly, but two not exactly advantageously placed for him no um, when I first saw that two and nine coming close together I thought if he gets a shot of the one here he's got a chance of a two nine combination but that six ball as we see completely rules that out could be two nine six if not a good safety if he can play the two nine six and it works out that could then lay the foundations for a two nine but doesn't seem to be what he's looking at at the moment. Well, that was unexpected. I want to say that's the first ball that is really missed you know he had a, a kick that he missed but that's the first attempted pot that is missed and he's missed it by far he was so far away with it wasn't he you can't believe this is the same match we were watching half an hour ago and you can't believe that's the same player who was so much on top of things he is really feeling this ball. this is what the Moscone does to you are you sure you would have wanted to play in this Kelly <laughs> No, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a bit scary, but the experience must be absolutely awesome. What a great shot there from Jeremy. I think he's completely covered. Only option is to come off the back rail, kicking the one ball from behind. Unless... Yeah. Unless he thinks of jumping, but... Jumping Jeremy. Well, that's the wrong way round, but. Yeah. Great shot. Again, with that two ball where it is, really, we're not going to be seeing a player come in and in one visit winning this match. There's going to be a lot more tactical play to come yeah I mean you look at the nine ball sandwiched in between the two and the six You're absolutely right we've still got some drama to witness on this Thursday evening and he's got the cover The thing that is something that we all should be aware of is when we talk about tactical play, the experience that Jeremy has and the knowledge that Jeremy has, I'm not sure who I would say he's got the advantage here. Just feels like every shot is so difficult for both of them now. This is what you want, isn't it, in a situation like this? Last rack of the night. Such a pivotal moment in the whole tournament. I think Jeremy Jones has aged about another 10 years over the last hour or so. <laughs> I think we all have. <laughs> well, here it's a quite a straightforward shot, I think. I'm thinking split the ball side to side, trying to hide behind cue ball and one ball behind five and three. 
There we go. And he got me. I thought he may have gone the other way. Cue ball behind the purple five. But obviously from here we can't quite see the exact angle. nobody wants this one ball <laughs> where that two ball is everybody's trying to wait for the opportunity ball in hand where they can place that key ball and break out that two absolutely that's why this could go on for a while yes love to know what Jeremy Jones reaction would have been if you'd gone to him this time a week ago and shown him this scenario and said Jeremy in seven days time this is what you'll be doing you'll be playing in front of a packed house at Alexandra Palace against one of the best players in the world with a chance to beat him he wasn't expecting to be playing he came here as captain Earl Strickland's withdrawal as a COVID contact suspected case changed everything Is, is whatever safety play whatever safety shot that you're playing you don't want to disturb the two and nine unless you can lock it in Significant error. Well, it's going to take some effort to pop that one and develop the two. But I think at the very least we'll see David Alcady try, so the one may finally be about to disappear. The good thing here is where the two not where the two is so close to nine. When he hits that two on the from his angle, the left side, that two ball's gonna stick onto that bottom rail. So he just has to make sure he gets a good cue ball and then Jeremy is in a bit of trouble. Yeah, didn't try to develop the two off the pot on the one, but he can certainly develop the situation here. As you said, Kelly. And a nice length on the cue ball. Now look at where that nine ball's gone. Are we thinking five nine combination? Well, it's made the five awkward. Obviously, it doesn't go clean into any pocket, and you need to be relatively on a good shape to make that five nine easy. But it's certainly on oh, wow. <laughs> well this situation has really moved on in the last few shots getting to the point now well, one error could be the last one for the player who makes it nothing's coming easily nothing straightforward in this final rack well, you saw Jeremy's face not being too happy, and I'll tell you for why. That's where that three ball's gone. He's wanting to get a clean opportunity to run out and get that 5-9. But that three ball now is tied up, just like we had the experience with when we had the two ball tied up. Having said that, that was a nice, delicate shot from David. A bit more out in the open now. Yeah, 
his intention there was to have that two ball hidden behind the seven and the cue ball I think he was hoping also to get it hidden behind the three or six he's left David a shot here now will he take it or will he play a safe I think he's going to go for it people, particularly those involved in the snooker world, see Poole as having no subtlety to it, being all about just relentless potting and trying to break and run every time. And if any of those people have been watching for the last 10, 15 minutes, they might just have changed their opinion here. This whole other side of the game is at least as fascinating in its own right. Kelly, we were wondering for a moment but the peeps going to run out now even David Arcade he's smiling at that one but it's a rueful one now what's he got in the three what are his options well you know I think he's going to play a, the three clipping it thin and cue ball back around there we go to the nine five not an easy shot because if he hits it too far it will leak out he wants it stuck behind that nine. With his visible emotions, he's in no way hiding how much this means to him. David here playing the exact same shot, using the six ball as a stopper, cue ball. He's going to go through the gap. Wow. Great view we had there. I could just see that going right through that gap. If you were trying to find that gap, how many goals would you need to do it? Yeah, exactly. Stand there all day with a bucket of balls. Exactly. Now, what's he going to do here? What will he do here? Same. That's very risky. Very risky. Yeah. shot it was too risky where he was leaving the th uh, three ball you know the David Arcady of half an hour ago would almost be marking down the rack for him now you just get the feeling there could still be one last twist well the twist I think has come Michael just as you said I think that eight ball has just rolled onto the six too close to the six to allow it to go into that top pocket because I can tell by uh, as we can see with David's body language and reaction it's the rack that refuses to end Refuses to end or just continues to mm. make a thriller out of this one. He's going for this. Absolutely. If that bounces, and it has a little. Now this looks easy, but Jeremy's cue ball's a little close to that rail, which means he's got a jack up slightly. And nothing is easy in this rack. No, exactly. And he's got a jack up slightly, with a touch of right spin to keep that cue ball on this side of the table to get on the seven. If he plays fine it foul. playing ball, he's going to... Fine foul. No, it's fine foul. There's no extension. You ask me to... There's, there's the time. The clock doesn't stop when you ask me to clean it. 
They've had 12 seconds left as the clock doesn't stop. I don't believe what I'm seeing here. He's been called for a time foul. He thought, it seems, that the clock would stop when he asked for the cue ball to be cleaned. It didn't. And Marcel Eckhart has called a time foul. He's consulting with the senior referee, we, John Lehman. We mentioned it every time. With the tournament organiser, Emily Fraser. And he's continuing the round with Marcel. The thing, Michael, I didn't hear the bleat, did you? I certainly don't think Jeremy Jones did. What a way this would be for this night to end. We talked about one of the most iconic victories in Moscone Cup history, potentially at the end of this. We've certainly got one of its biggest controversies. And David Arcady has got to ignore all of that, put it out of his head, keep his composure. Oh, there'll be some words to be said about this afterwards. But Marcel Eckhart is a fine referee. And it's up to him to apply the regulations as they are. How sick is Jeremy Jones going to be? He's put so much into this. It looked as though he had a great chance to close it to 8-6. But in the end, it's a clean sweep for Europe tonight. And they are just two points away. the rack was going on you don't often see the cue ball being cleaned now Marcel was clearly aware of the situation he was rushing to do it as quickly as possible but Jeremy seemed to think that the clock would stop for him and it's not a situation that arises because racks don't tend to go on this long so you rarely see it getting to the stage where that request is even made of the referee Jeremy Jones trails away, Skyler Woodward trying to console him, Chris Reinhold behind him, and Tyler Steyer leading them from the front. How are they going to feel? What can the team talk be like now?